Hey guys, this is Mitch with Finepoint CGI, and today we're going to talk about how to add touch support to our little Angry Birds game. So we're going to go through the process of setting up camera panning. We're going to set up the ability to drag and let go of our birds, and we're going to go ahead and test some of our functionality with some of our buttons and things like that. So that's what I got in store for you guys today. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up touch controls for our camera, right? Because you want to be able to pan around your scene and things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and come over to our camera here. We're going to go ahead and click on our little script and we will come down here to the bottom of our script and let's add in some additional controls here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read for an event. So we'll say funk underscore input event. And what that's gonna do is anytime the user creates some kind of input, it's gonna run this function. So if the user mouses over something or clicks on something, it's gonna go ahead and try to run this function. So you don't want a lot of these in your scene, but you can have a few of them and it's not going to hurt your performance too much. And what we'll do is we'll say if event is input event screen drag, then I'm going to want to go ahead and move local x event dot relative dot x. And I'm going to want to multiply that by minus one. And the reason why is because when you're moving your camera and you're pulling it like this, right? You're pulling it left to right. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but when you're pulling it left to right like this, you don't want your camera to follow your mouse. You don't want, when you do this, you don't want it to go to the left, right? You want it to go to the right. So you need to multiply it by minus one. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate that and hit Y and Y. And that will allow us to have it on both ends. So now we need to go ahead and export this out to Android to check it out, right? To see if it even works. So what we can do is we can go to project, export, click on our ad, click on Android, and then we have that. Now, if you haven't already gone through my Android exporting tutorial, I have a link to it in the description below and I kind of cover how to set up your entire project for Android export. So if you haven't seen that tutorial, go ahead and check it out before you continue on with this tutorial. Don't worry, I'll wait and just kind of hang out here until you get back. So what we'll do is we'll go to close and we'll go ahead and click on this little Android icon. If you don't have this Android icon, you need to enable Android debugging on your phone. And it is different based off of each phone. I have a Google Pixel, so it's just in my settings under about. In your case, it might be in a different section depending on you know what kind of phones you have. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this and I'm going to export it out to my phone. And you'll see if I come in here and I go ahead and I move my finger, you'll see that I can move my camera around, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. But you'll notice some things. One, our screen size is tiny and we don't want that because if you remember on our Godot side, it should be about this big, right? This little pink box here. So that's a problem. So what we can do is we can go up to our project, project settings, we can come down here to our window right here under display, and then we can come down here and change our stretching mode from disabled to 2D and our aspect to keep height. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to keep our height so that our height is the same. So from here to here will always be the same for us. And that's what we want. Now, we need to go ahead and allow us to use our mouse to pan as well. So if we hit play and we click, you'll see that nothing happens. And the reason why is because we're not looking for clicks, we're looking for touch events. So we can either choose to support it or we can emulate our touch screen. And it's up to you on which one you want. I will show you guys both. So if we close this and then we go to project, project settings, and we go to input devices, which is here, and we change it to pointing. 
And then we go ahead and emulate touch from mouse and we turn that on. If you hit close and you hit play, that should solve this problem. You'll see that, oh, whoops, I'm playing it on my Android. Wrong button. We hit play. You'll see that now everything seems to work because we're emulating touch, right? We're saying that we are touching our screen, right? So that's great. You can see we can pull this back and let go and it seems like it works. Now, something that you'll notice is that seemed to have worked, but if I come over here on my Android and I run it, you'll notice that it doesn't quite work the way that we expect it to. You'll see that if I kind of click, it just kind of sort of works, but not really. And the reason why is because the emulate touch also continues to emulate your mouse as well. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you code your game around a mouse and then you emulate touch, it's still going to work even though you have no touch functionality. So that's something to just keep in mind. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to also support mouse with your camera as well. So we'll go here into our camera script. We'll come down to our event and we'll say if event is input event mouse motion, then we'll just go ahead and do the same thing, right? So we can just kind of grab this and just paste it down here. And you would think that that might work, right? So you can kind of do that, but you'll see that it doesn't quite do what we want, right? So how do we solve that? Well, one of the simplest ways is to go ahead and add in a small Boolean. So we'll say if we're clicking, then we're going to go ahead and do all of this. Simple enough. Now, we need to go ahead and make this a Boolean value up here. So we'll go ahead and say var clicking is equal to false. And we'll come down here and we'll say in our process, we'll check for that. So we'll go ahead and say if input dot is action just pressed left mouse button, then clicking is equal to true. And then we have to also say if input dot is action just release left mouse button, then clicking is equal to false. Now this works and it's slightly inefficient. We could do an else if here to kind of help with efficiency. So that way it only checks this and then it looks if it's released. Um, it's up to you guys on which one you prefer, but it's fine regardless. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then if we hit play, you'll see that it only works when we click and that's it. So that's perfect. Now, something you'll notice is if we drag this, you'll see that everything kind of gets funky. See that? The mouse kind of moves while the thing is getting pulled here. And that's a problem. So how can we fix that? We need to know what our slingshot state is, right? So what we can do is we can come over here and say, if get tree dot get nodes in group quote slingshot. And we got to get back our first item in that array dot slingshot. And I think it's capital S state is equal to, and we need to also pull back that reference to that enum. And if you remember, it's out in our slingshot. So we'll just kind of grab this entire bit of code here and then just paste it, right? And then we can say dot sling state dot pulling. Then we can go ahead and do this code, but that wouldn't work because we're looking to see if we're pulling, right? So we want to say, if we are not pulling, then we want to do this. Now this is going to work. So if I hit play, you'll see, I can move my camera around. If I click and drag my uh, guy here, it's perfectly fine. Everything seems to work, right? But something that we should do is we should get a global reference to our slingshot. So we should just come up here and say var slingshot. And we should come up here 
and get a reference to our slingshot. So we'll just kind of pull this up here and say, slingshot is equal to that. And then we can come in here and say, slingshot dot slingshot state. And we can do the same thing over here. We'll just grab this and paste it in. There we go. And it should just work for us. So we'll go ahead and hit play. And you can see we pull this back. Everything acts normal. And we can also pan as well. So perfect, right? That's exactly what we wanted. So we'll go ahead and close this. Now, one thing, if I run this on Android, the next big thing I guess that we have to look at is why our slingshot isn't working, right? Our slingshot seems to be broken on Android. When we pull back, it just kind of lets go, right? You can see if I pull it back, it just kind of lets go immediately. See that? And it just doesn't really work so well. Well, the reason why that is, is because we are checking for our mouse state in our slingshot. So if we come over here, you can see right here, we're checking for a mouse. And we don't want that, right? We want to check for our touch event, right? We don't want to check for our mouse. We want to look for a touch event of some kind, right? So what we can do is we can go ahead and say, okay, much like we did with this, where we had a polling, let's go ahead and add that in. So polling. Right, we'll come up here and add that in here as well. So var polling is equal to false, right? And that will work, but now we need to set our polling value, right? So what we can do is we can come down here and say, okay, if event uh, slingshot is, is equal to idle and the event is a mouse button, then go ahead and do this and polling is equal to true, right? And this would work for our PC version of it, right? It should just work. Now you'll see that it's not working in terms of letting us let go yet, but that's okay. You'll see that it does work, but this wouldn't work on mobile, right? Because we're not a mouse a button, right? So what we can do instead is we can come over here and say, if event is mouse button or event is input event touch screen, or screen touch, I should say. And we wrap this in parentheses to say either this or this needs to be true and this needs to be true for us to do this. Okay. And then we can go ahead and say, okay, bunk underscore input event, and we can check our event. So if event is input event, screen touch and not event dot is pressed, then we can say polling is equal to false, right? And that basically would handle it for us. So if we go ahead and run this and we pull this and we let go, you'll see that our character can now be fired off, which is perfect. That's basically what we wanted, right? So we can kind of yank this back and throw it and you'll see he goes flying, which is great. That's what we want. Now, if we run this on Android, how is Android gonna handle it? That's a good question. So we can go ahead and check it out. And we'll pull back on this and we'll let go and you'll see that it handles it just as well as you would expect. And you can see that we can even hit restart level and kind of launch it at this, get our two stars, click on our next level, launch it at it. You can see we got our three stars. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. So I know this was kind of a short video than my usual, you know, hour, hour and a half videos, but the topic is not super crazy. It's just kind of an optional topic for our project here. So we went over how to do mouse input and how to do touch input. And we talked about how to do our relative input and things like that. We also talked about some of the differences between the different input systems, right? And we basically made it so that our um, 
project can be ran on an Android device. Now in the next video, I plan on setting up our level unlocking system and setting up our main screen. So that one's probably gonna be a lot longer and a lot more crazy, but um, yeah, if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And hey, if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button because I am here to make content for you guys. Now this video, as with all of my videos, was a viewer suggested video. So if you have a suggestion, please let me know in the comments below and I'll be more than happy to add it to my Trello board. And hey, if you guys have any questions or comments, please throw them in the comments below and let me know because uh, I am more than happy to help you guys with any issues that you guys may have. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching and I will see you all next time. Thanks.